Golden Ponds, which is actually pretty much the only multi-species freshwater fishery in WA. Um, but basically I want to give you a guide of the basic gear and the basic methods that we use to fish these lakes. Now, and I don't mean just the carp lake, because it's very popular and it's pretty much what people want to hear. But there's fish all throughout Golden Ponds, in the main lake, the fountain lake, this lake right behind me. Um, all the lakes here have got fish in them, some more than others and some are tricky to catch but I'll show you two methods that I use as well as the kids to catch all the fish that you can catch here at Golden Ponds. So let's have a look. Okay so the idea is to give you a rundown on the basics. So 2,000 to 4,000 reels are usually pretty good for me. Um, I like to use pretty much 6 pound or 10 pound. Uh, line on those. Uh, obviously the 4,000 are usually low with a 10 pound. Uh, this is actually a really good brand. This Platypus Platinum 10 pound. It's only 0.2 mil. Um, so it's actually slightly uh, more than the 6 pound. But it is really strong. It's got a lovely stretch to it and everything. that you, uh, you, you rarely snap off. As long as you've got your drag set nicely and you play your fish and tire them out, you can't really go wrong. Uh, your basic baits, as you can see, corn and spam, and they work really well for me. Um, used in certain di different ways, but I'll give you a rundown on that. Uh, your bite alarm's a little bit more technical, uh, usually used with your hair rigs for your specimen fish, so a bigger bait going for a bigger fish. Uh, your floats, that's another major thing here. Uh, don't get me wrong, you can still catch fish on the, uh, the little yellow and red circular floats that you generally get but they do give a lot more resistance on the surface than these guys, so it's a lot slender. It's like pulling a pool noodle under the surface of your pool compared to a soccer ball. Um, your bank sticks, I'll get to those as well. Also, there's trout in winter here, as well as barramundi in summer, so I'll give you a little rundown on some flies and some of the fly gear that I use. I've uh, had some good success with these little uh, bead-headed nymphs. You can see there, they work really well. Um, but there's also a selection of uh, crankbaits and uh, imitation prawns that I use on the fly rod. Obviously the cranks are more on the spin rod. And the same with these, uh, these squidgies here. They're, they're quite good for the brim in the main lake. There's some big ones in there. Again, not many, but there are some very big fish in there. Again, the tackle I use, it's very scaled down. It's one thing that isn't really explained when you come here is that how light you really need to go. So if you look at the size of some of these hooks, very small barbless hooks, which Bank Angler have now got a stand in the shop here, so you can supply yourself with this. Very small swivels of various sizes, and the sinkers as well. Now I personally, unless you're bolt rigging for some big carp, I usually go for a very small bead sinker. There we go, something along the lines of this guy here, the very small one at the bottom there. Um, all the way up to that uh, ounce and a quarter or two ounce lead there just for the bolt rigs for the bigger carp. Um, another thing is just an extra gear that is not very common here. You've got some boily needles and disgorgers, just help you unhook the fish and obviously bait on a hair rig. I will actually do a separate video on a very basic hair rig that you can tie up, use with boilies or a string of corn or a large bit of spam or luncheon meat. Um, as well as these feeders. The uh, method feeders again, Bank Angler's got a nice stand up in the shop here, the home store at Golden Ponds, you can buy these. Um, you get the mould with them, I actually like to use them as like an American style pack bait, so I make a big ball around them. 
um, but it's basically like a burly cage, a burly feeder. And these, when you actually start to get the hang of golden ponds, you'll want some of these. Because one day you will hook something that you really, really want a picture, a length, a weight, everything of. So get yourself some scales, trust me. The Digi scales are a lot more accurate, but your typical luggage scales will give you a rough idea. Okay, so I basically just wanted to give you a bit more of a semi-detailed explanation on, the, on what we're doing down here. Um, the easiest rig I think for down here would be a um, running sinker rig. As well as simple waggler fishing or float fishing, it's as simple as you can get. To see how to tie both these rigs, click these videos here. And down to a very small barbless hook. I say barbless, they're a lot easier to unhook and obviously a lot of the fish we catch here we're going to chuck back. So we want them to be good healthy fish so we can catch them again when they're a bit bigger. For a more detailed video on feeders, click here. With these feeders here, this is what I would usually use on a competition or on the carp lake. There's a lot, a lot of fish in the carp lake. There's a big stock of fish in there. And this basically keeps the fish in your area and the area that you're fishing baited. So there's more likely the fish will come through, graze, rather than just picking off one or two and move. They'll sit there like a herd of cows or sheep. They'll just... These feeders are available to buy on the home store or on this website. Without boring you too much, um, the fly gear, this was basically me lacking a challenge. Um, I used a bead headed nymph. Um, I don't know how successful it's going to be. I've, I've caught a couple of fish, but it wasn't exactly easy. Um, I've got a fly box here. Um, it's got a basic selection of most coarse flies, but a few of the extras I've added in uh, for the main lake are these freshwater shrimp patterns. Um, they're really good. I got them for troutflies.com.au and they really imitate a freshwater shrimp really well and you will get a lot of bites in the main lake uh, from the big brim that are in here. As well as these Atomics, they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, good quality lure uh, and they dive really well and normally I would go for a more natural pattern if I was fishing Waruna or Harvey or a river system. Uh, but because the water here is quite murky, um, this sort of fluoro greeny colour um, does seem to get the attraction of them a lot quicker than the natural colours. Depthing the float. Okay, so we're here, typical golden ponds looking pond. We've got some features in the right hand margin there with the reeds. Shelves out to deeper water. And where are the fish likely to be lying? So they're going to be looking for features like this little reed patch here. It's on the margin here. Then you've got the shelf. And where these reeds end, it goes deeper and then heads out into the middle of the lake. So I'm going to show you how to fish that shelf, which is where the fish will patrol in and out of these features. Okay, so this is the edge of the reed bed I just showed you before. Uh, it's literally just on the edge of that shelf that I was talking about. So as the lake starts to get deeper, and it's an area that the fish like to patrol a lot. So basically what I do is I've made up my own plummets as they're called or basically just the heavy weight that you can hook on your rig, check the depth and just easily take off without having to change anything. But basically what we're doing is we're setting a depth on the float and we're swinging in to the area that we want to fish. So I'll do that now. Okay, so you saw the weight hit, the float go boom. It's obviously a lot deeper than I've got it set. We want the hook to be on the bottom and the float to be on the top. So I reel back in, lengthen the distance between the hook and the float just by sliding those split shots up, just like I showed you before on the float rig video, and trying again. So we're a little bit deeper now, back to the same spot, edge of the reeds, have a look. Okay. So now we've got the tip of the float showing. I can tell that's pretty much on the money because there's a black strip underneath that yellow bit. And if I put more tension or less tension, it sits slightly higher. And that's just where you want it, just where that black line is. So that you can tell if the fish picks up the bait 
it doesn't move anywhere it will rise up and you'll see the black line now typically as you're about to see if a fish grabs the bait and the way we want him to it'll dip like that and then suddenly bang it goes under and you hit it and you got your fish so you're basically looking at a depth from that float to that lead now if I want to get more accurate about where I'm fishing that's one area now that area is completely different to another area now if I go maybe I don't know a foot to two foot further out with the same setup about there we're sitting under the surface there so that's another two or three inches deeper than we were so again you would depth the float for there 